Putting everything together, we will now discuss methods on how to mathematically compare proportions between two groups. For this, we'll focus primarily on relative risk. Odds ratios will be discussed in class activities, but for your upcoming quiz, focus on relative risk calculations. Of note, you are not required to memorize the relative risk equation. We will provide that, but you should memorize how to calculate incidence and prevalence. Those equations will not be given. So remember, knowing the incidence rate of a single group is usually not enough information. We always need a reference point or comparator. So, for example, the new drug Anexa was recently approved for patients who are bleeding from anticoagulants. 30 days into the study, the mortality rate was 14% and 10% of patients developed clots. But there was no control group in the study. So are these numbers good or bad? We need to know the incidence rate of one group that receives the drug, intervention or exposure group, and the other group that does not receive the drug, the control group, in order to make an intelligent conclusion. Equations to compare incidence rates between groups include relative risk and absolute risk. Let's use an example and explore the utility of two by two tables in analyzing outcomes. So let's say we're interested in knowing whether living in a Slytherin house, which is our exposure, is related to the risk of being a death eater later in life. That's our outcome compared to other houses. We enroll 1,000 wizards, 250 who are in Slytherin, and 750 from the other three houses and follow them for 10 years. At the 10 year mark, we see that 100 Slytherin wizards have become death eaters and 200 non-Slytherin wizards are death eaters. In order to incidence, calculate the incidence in the groups most easily, it's best to organize information in a two by two table, like here. Incidence in Slytherin is going to be the number of new cases of death eaters, which is 100, for those exposed to Slytherin out of a total of a risk population of 250. Therefore, the incidence is 100 divided by 250, or 40% incidence. The incidence of disease in those not exposed to Slytherin is similarly calculated. 200 new cases over 750 people in the at-risk population is 27%. Absolute risk reduction is a simple subtraction problem of 40% minus 27%, which gives us 13%. Relative risk is calculated very similarly to absolute risk reduction. It only uses division instead of subtraction. Also, as opposed to talking about excess risk of disease, relative risk describes the strength of the relationship between exposure and disease. So in our example of death eaters, our relative risk is taking the incidence of being a death eater at, with exposure to Slytherin. So that's 0.4 divided by uh, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, which is 40% divided by the incidence of being a death eater when you're not exposed to Slytherin, and that was 0.27. So we have 148% relative risk of being a death eater if we are in the Slytherin house. It can sometimes be difficult to keep your uh, risk calculation straight. So this table is pretty useful to try to help you differentiate between absolute risk and relative risk. So first, the calculation for absolute risk is subtraction, whereas for relative risk, it's division. Uh, the use in healthcare, absolute risk is usually used to assess the impact of exposure over a population, and the relative risk gives us information about strength of relationship. Uh, general interpretation of absolute risk is excess risk or rate associated with the exposure. And the general interpretation of relative risk is strength of relationship between exposure and disease occurrence. The interpretation when there is no risk difference for absolute risk, this would be 0% or 0. So if they're both, if there's no difference between them and you're doing subtraction, your result is going to be zero. Whereas with relative risk, since it's division, if there's no difference between the um, 
two groups, the relative risk is going to equal one.